In the UK, Parliament has officially been suspended for five weeks with members of the Parliament not due back until 14th of October. Well, let's talk to my colleague there, Juliana, for latest developments on this. Uh, good afternoon, Juliana. Good afternoon, Chimase. Now that the Parliament has officially been suspended, what next? Well, the Parliament's uh, five-week suspension uh, kicked off last night with those scenes, those scenes that we've all seen of opposition party members staging what is widely agreed as quite a shameful uh, protest in the House of Commons. And really, really now the Brexit countdown uh, begins. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, is running out of ideas. Sources close to Downing Street do believe that now that uh, the no deal has been passed into law and him leaving uh, the UK leaving the EU without a deal will be illegal. They do actually think that uh, a deal will be found. Of course, yesterday he was with the Irish leader Leo Varadkar in Dublin. Today, Arlene Foster, the leader of the uh, Democratic Unionist Party, the DUP, who actually uh, part of the British government, she is on her way to uh, London to meet with Boris Johnson. And there could potentially uh, be a solution to that uh, backstop, which essentially keeps Northern Ireland, which is a part of the UK, in the EU, because, of course, they don't want a hard border. So that uh, backstop, which is the most contentious part of the withdrawal agreement, uh, will will not have checks and uh, restrictions. So there seems to be some sort of talk around there. So perhaps, considering Boris Johnson doesn't want to be dead in a ditch, there will be um, a deal found before October the 14th. Let's hope so. Anyway, data released this morning shows employment rate remains high and uh, wage growth stays high. How comforting is this data in the mix of the Brexit talk? Well, for the government, this is particularly comforting, almost propaganda. They can say that, uh, you know, there's all this scaremongering about us heading into a recession and that the economy um, is retracting. But look at what we're doing. So, yes, 33, 31,000 uh, people are in employment, uh, the three months up into August. And also they showed that the private sector, if you're working within the private sector, your, your pay would have increased by 4%, which is much higher than the rate of inflation which is currently at about 2%. But there are chief economists around the UK that have been looking much closer into the labour markets data and they have considered it to be quite troubling. Some of the uh, results that are showing out the moment are vacancies. A close look at vacancies shows that there are 812,000 left less vacancies um, in the UK economy. Why is that worrying? Because over the past 12 years, there has been an increase in enterprise and entrepreneurship and lots of people creating jobs. So the fact that uh, there are less vacancies is uh, particularly uh, worrying. Also as well, they're showing that uh, the number of employment rates which is just below 0.1%, uh, isn't as fast as it should be. So yes, there were 31,000 uh, more people in jobs, although market analysts had put that figure down to 89,000. So it's certainly mixed uh, on this side of the shores. So how are the markets reading the Brexit talks and, um, of course, the wage growth data? Well, let's uh, directly go to those uh, figures, Chimmy. The FTSE All Share is down at intraday by 0.21%. The FTSE 100 is down by 0.19%. And the FTSE 250 is also down at 0.07%. In currencies, it's mixed. The US dollar is down on the British pound by 0.06%, up on the euro by 0.04%, and up on the Japanese yen by 0.08%. All right, Jelena, thank you, and see you tomorrow. And stocks in Asia were mixed today as a data release uh, showed Chinese producer prices in August falling to their worst year-on-year -year contraction in three years. Mainland Chinese stocks slipped on the day with the Shanghai Composite down 0.12% and the Shenzhen Composite shedding 0.112% to approximately 1,687 points. Uh, meanwhile, Hong Kong's Hansen Index was largely flat. Elsewhere, the Nikkei 225 in Japan gained 0.35%, while the Topics Index added 0.44%. In South Korea, the Kospi rose 0.62%. Australia's uh, ASS 200 slipped 0.51%.
in the U.S. stocks were set to open uh, slightly uh, lower today. At around 3 a.m. Eastern time, Dow futures fell 32 points, indicating a negative open of um, more than 34 points. Futures on the S&P and Nasdaq were both also marginally lower. The Dow pointed its fourth, posted its fourth straight day of gains on Monday on the back of renewed optimism in U.S.-China trade talks. Investors will be looking ahead to a new job openings and labor turnover survey due out at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Earlier in the day, a small business data survey will be released. There is also Apple's event on the radar starting at 10 a.m. Eastern time, where the tech giant is due to launch new products. On the earnings front, HD Supply, RH, and GameStop are among the corporates reporting this Tuesday. And back here on the African continent, Merge, the National Stock Exchange of the Republic of Seychelles, has announced the initial public offering of its tokenized shares, becoming the first entity in history to do so. The offering values the eight-year-old exchange at 25 million U.S. dollars. The offering is now open to investors from across the globe through the exchange's own portal, as well as through collaborations with U.S. broker-dealer, Jumpster, U.S. Custodian Primed Trust and London based blockchain provider Globacom. Merge is issuing over 1.6 million new shares at a price of $2.42 per share, raising 4 million US dollars of expansion capital. The exchange's tokenized security uses the Ethereum public blockchain, while also being listed on Merge's stock exchange and denominated in U.S. dollars, providing investors a secure and familiar way to gain exposure to the growing digital asset industry. Take a break, and um, when we come back, we'll look at the domestic commodities market with a focus on Nigeria timber industry in the face of global warming. To stay with us.